So this is the B section of passive design, um, which is going to address passive design principles, which is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as a foundation for a system or belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. Right, that is what a principle is, and this will be in, in connection to passive design. So the previously we talked about the, the building thermal comfort and how that connects to human thermal comfort, and this connection is the actual building envelope at the outside of the building, the, the shell of the building. Um, so with, the, with a, the, the passive design principle, it's really about what, what is the, why are some houses cold and some houses warm? And how does that house become cold and warm? In essence, some cold houses release the heat too quickly and some warm houses store the heat very well and so that is actually what results in the house being warm or the house being cold the house feeling naturally comfortable the house feeling um, awkwardly warm and so what are we looking for we're actually looking for the middle ground um, and so the two factors that have the greatest influence on the building's thermal performance is really the walls and the roof um, how the walls store the heat and release it during the evening to keep the house warm but don't heat the house up too quickly and how the roof um, is able to actually contain that heat or release that heat um, at the prescribed time. And of course then there's the, there's the site. So how does the site influence the house's performance? These two images show that um, the site is, is, it greatly influences um, the house's performance because Basic things like, like planting or hillsides mm -hmm. um, conduct wind and they conduct um, air um, in certain pathways. And so if you look at the, the first sketch on the left hand side, you'll see that um, the planting and the, the, the vegetation that is positioned at the far end of the house actually causes um, the, the wind to not really enter in through through the building whereas on the right hand side you can see that just by stepping the vegetation you can create quite a quite a beautiful flow through the building um, and that is that is determined by positioning the vegetation there and also taking note of what vegetation is there and in turn positioning the building accordingly and so planting a vegetation um, how does this really um, affect a house. I have made a list of here which I'm not going to read through but you can pause this clip and just read through this and it will give you a good idea, idea of, of how uh, vegetation can affect um, the performance of a house. Then of course there's orientation. Because we are um, we are north facing world um, we position our buildings north facing and so if you take a look at these two these two buildings which have identical plans the one is facing north and the one is facing south the one that's facing north is the one on the left hand side why do i say that i say that because in essence what we really want is to have all of our services on the south the places where we don't spend most of our time now i do not spend my entire life in my kitchen some of you guys <laughs> like to spend lots of times in your kitchen um, but mainly I think that what happens is we either lounging in our bedrooms or lounging in our living rooms. And so that is the place that we want the most amount of sun to come in, especially in winter. Um, and so you'll see that the bathrooms and the, the, the places that are not used very often are positioned on the south. Whereas in, in the second uh, drawing on the right hand side, you'll see that firstly the problem with this plan uh, is, is not just that, that the living rooms and, and master bedrooms on the south, but that actually the, there, is no, uh, there is no window on the north, um, apart from in the toilet, to allow light in. So not only is this, is this building now going to be cold, but it is also going to be very dark. And so I think this is really uh, one of the fundamental issues with, with these little complexes that go up. The plan of the building is identical, no matter where it's placed and what the what the um, the people putting up these buildings are doing is that they are just creating one um, one block uh, fits all and so uh, they take that block and they just see how many they can fit on a site and they're not taking into consideration orientation of where the sun is or changing the window position uh, to allow light in when the orientation of the building changes and so you find a lot of these people 
with balconies that lead out onto the south, which is freezing cold, and they never inhabit those balconies. And so they buy these beautiful spaces thinking that they're going to spend all this time on their balcony, but actually it's not comfortable to live in. It's not comfortable to be in. And, um, and all of these things um, cause us to start using all sorts of other types of means to, to heat our spaces up and cool our spaces down and light our spaces. And so lights during the day become a thing. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is that if, if we could choose, um, like my house, for example, I live in Orange Grove in Johannesburg, and all of my bedrooms in my house are positioned on the north and the living spaces are on the south. Now, if I could have redesigned this house uh, in the way that I wanted, I would have put all my living spaces on the south and all my sleeping spaces on the north. Um, not that that would be my first choice. My first choice would be this plan in front of me with my master bedroom and my living space on the north. However, what am I saying? I'm saying that the amount of time I spend in my bedroom versus the amount of time I spend in my living spaces is far less. Um, and so I would prefer that the space that I'm in all day be warm and then choose a smaller space like a bedroom space to just warm up with a heater or use <clears throat> using a, a, a hot water bottle or something like that, which would still suffice. Um, okay, and so the building shape, how does this impact on, on um, our space and how the building functions as, as a hot or a cold um, unit and how does it hold heat or release heat? And this is just um, a little um, interesting study, which uh, I found on one of your uh, recommended readings. If you'll just pause this video and read through this, I, I thought it was quite interesting, um, especially with all the volumes being the same size, uh, 400 meters cubed. Um, and just take a look to see what the best uh, solution uh, in terms of a building would be. I, I found this very interesting. Okay, and so there's, uh, there is something that I'm calling the cool house concept. So the cool house in your bedroom, what does that look like? It is bringing the right amount of, of air in through a simple thing like a tree, which is going to refresh the air. And at the beginning of the year, we did a little experiment um, to see what would happen if we put a nice plant in front of our fan. We'd feel like the air was cooler in our room. Um, and um, positioning the windows in a certain way that this air can flow through, but also that you're getting enough light and enough heat in. Um, and then, of, then there's cool house in a building, which is a totally different thing. Um, much more integrated, many more systems that, that interact with one another. For example, in this case, you can, you can use a solar slab, which stores cooler air during the night and releases it during the day, which is airflow that can be in co controlled. In this case, they're using an HVAC system. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. You can have uh, air vents um, on the edges of your building that draw that draw that that air in that then gets heated and releases into the building. And then you can have um, the northern windows that can be open to allow air in to be drawn in. And you can have that air that circulates up into your building with ceiling fans that also help with circulating that. Um, and those ceiling fans can be solar, solar driven um, with ceiling fans. And so all of that kind of circulates through. And then of course you can have windows that, that can be opened for airflow throughout the whole house, all right? And these windows, they just allow the air to flow. That flow is important. If you only have windows on one side, then the flow is restrictive. All right, then you've got hot air which is exhausted through vents in the windows and powered by, by an exhaust vent. That hot air um, can be released through, um, through little vents at the bottom of your, of your windows. This is, um, this is obviously a little bit advanced um, for a, a normal house, but it is a solution. Um, and all the while you have the sun that's kind of heating up, heating up your, your building. This is a, a case study from America. So they have, um, they have their sun on the south, but we have ours on the north. Okay, and then hot air, the hot air that is inside the building gets drawn up and it hits, it, it can be um, released through the stack effect, which I've talked about before. And what happens at the top of this, what happens is hot air rises 
uh, into this, this area over here. And that's why high volume ceiling uh, spaces are quite useful. Because if we have windows that, that open up into a high volume ceiling, then all the hot air kind of faffs around, faffs around, and eventually goes up there. And if you have windows at the top there, then it can be released out. And you create this beautiful, um, naturally cooled uh, zone. And then indirect light is bounced into the clear story space, okay, which it's also um, done through uh, through this high area. Not only is it useful for this kind of vacuum of, of the hot air, but um, bring it. Those clear story windows also bring light into that space, which kind of um, um, controls the amount of of um, darkness that the building is in because to get the light from here all the way through to there or from here through these walls to there can become a mission and so not only do those um, clear story windows pull the heat out but they also bring in a nice kind of washed light all right and then finally a reflective coat on the roof um, which can either be a white a white paint or it can be a shiny paint um, and that it doesn't seem much, but actually um, just putting that coat onto the roof does really reflect a lot of heat and uh, reduce a lot of heat coming into your, your building. Um, the final thing that I wanted to talk about was, was clever tree, tree planting and not just randomly, but where you feel that there are, um, there are wind scoops, um, positioning, planting and positioning your vegetation carefully in those areas. Uh, assists with making sure that you get really nice cool air into that building. All right, then there are two other ways that you can kind of buffer um, and, and double facade your building. Uh, a buffer is actually a, a planted element or kind of a shading element um, that sits in front of your building where a double facade is a second skin that's clipped onto an existing building, um, which is, is a shading device. All right, and if we have to talk about shading, um, there are two different types of, of shading, um, let's say, uh, styles. You get, you get the horizontal shading style and then you get the vertical shading style. The horizontal shading style um, is mainly for the summer sun because of the sun being high in the sky. And that horizontality kind of cuts that, cuts the sun. And then you get your verticals, which is generally the winter sun. Um, that is low in the sky and so on your west um, when that winter sun is, is sitting really low it's good to have um, good to have some some vertical louvers on that side and that's the end of this lecture I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, thank you.